A young boy's call to the police sent shivers down everyone's spine as officers rushed to his home, when they arrived, they were met with a heartbreaking sight that brought tears to their eyes at the police station, Richard and his new colleague Steve were eagerly counting down the minutes until they could finally leave after a grueling day, exhausted from the challenges they faced, they yearned for some much needed rest, but duty called once again when the phone rang, interrupting their hopes. Of an early departure, what's at this time, Steve answered wearily, putting the call on speaker, they were taken aback by the frightened voice of a young boy pleading for help before his father returned, we're on our way, where are you, Richard asked, his sense of urgency cutting through his fatigue, the boy quickly shared his location before the call abruptly ended with concern etched on their faces, Richard and Steve knew they couldn't ignore the desperate plea for assistance, they grabbed their keys and hurried to their vehicle, ready to respond to the boy's distress as they drove through the quiet streets of the night, a mix of worry and duty filled the air, the calm of the night had been shattered by the urgency of their mission to save a child in danger, he sounded terrified of his father, Steve remarked, breaking the tense silence in the car, Richard nodded in agreement, his mind racing with questions about the boy's situation, as they neared their destination, they braced themselves for whatever they might find, determined to protect the boy from harm arriving at the boy's address, they were met with a scene of neglect and despair, the dilapidated house stood before them, a stark contrast to the tidy room they would later discover, it's hard to believe someone lives here, Steve remarked, shocked by the state of the place Richard sighed, his years of experience telling him that not everyone had the luxury of choice when it came to their living conditions, they cautiously entered the house, prepared for whatever they might encounter, inside, they were greeted by the foul smell of decay and neglect, room after room revealed the extent of the neglect, until they reached the second floor, where they found a room that seemed almost magical in its tidiness, this is odd, Richard mused, noting the stark contrast between this room and the rest of the house, it was clear that someone lived here, seeking solace amidst the chaos of their surroundings, with a renewed sense of determination, Richard and Steve continued their search, hoping to find the boy and ensure his safety, despite the challenges they faced, they remained committed to their duty, ready to protect those in need no matter the cost, Richard's curiosity was piqued by the orderly room, but their attention was soon drawn to another door, firmly locked, calling out for the boy again, their voices shattered the silence of the eerie house, kid, are you there, Steve's voice echoed through, the hallway, but all they heard was a weak reply from behind the door, I'm here, I'm here, came the little boy's desperate plea, we've come to help you, can you unlock the door, Steve asked, his voice filled with compassion, but the boy's response shattered their hopes, he was unable to unlock the door, Richard and Steve exchanged puzzled looks, their determination to help the boy only growing stronger, without hesitation, they prepared to force the door open with a powerful shove, the door crashed open, revealing a scene that left them frozen in shock, before them lay a sight they were utterly unprepared for, a young boy, barely seven years old, was chained by his ankle to a bed, tears streamed down his face, a mixture of relief and fear evident in his wide eyes, how could this happen, who would do such a thing to a child, Richard's voice was barely a whisper, his heart breaking at the sight before him, the boy looked up at them with a mixture of fear and hope, his small frame, trembling in distress, don't worry, we're here now, Richard reassured him, his voice filled with compassion as he approached the boy cautiously, meanwhile, Steve searched for a tool to break the chains, Richard, a father himself, was deeply moved by the boy's plight, tears threatened to spill from his eyes as he empathized with the child's suffering, the boy's physical condition was dire, he was emaciated, his ribs protruding through his skin, bruises and wounds marred his small body, testament. To the abuse he had endured, trembling with fear and cold, the boy clung to Richard for comfort as they worked to free him from his chains, but their efforts were interrupted by noises from below, it's him, my dad, please, hide, the boy whispered in sheer panic, before they could react, a man burst into the room, his eyes wild with rage, in a blind fury, he launched himself at the officers, his movements erratic and unpredictable, a fierce struggle ensued as Richard and Steve fought to restrain. The man, despite his desperate resistance, Steve, with his training in jiu-jitsu, managed to subdue him, pinning him to the ground with a decisive move, call for backup, Steve yelled, 
his voice filled with urgency as he ensured the man was securely restrained. Richard wasted no time, rushing to their car to radio for additional police support. Within moments, the area was swarming with law enforcement, and the boy's father was detained and escorted to the station with the immediate threat. Neutralized, Richard's attention returned to the boy, who was now shivering uncontrollably from hunger and cold, wrapping his jacket around the child, Richard offered words of comfort, reassuring him that he was safe now, as the boy was taken for medical care, Richard couldn't help but feel a mix of emotions, relief flooded through him knowing they had rescued the boy from his torment, but concern gnawed at him as he wondered about the challenging road ahead for the child, how would he recover? From the trauma he had endured at the hands of those meant to protect him with a heavy heart, Richard watched as the boy was whisked away, knowing that their work was far from over, but in that moment, as he looked into the boy's eyes and saw a glimmer of hope amidst the pain, Richard knew that he had made a difference, and for that, he felt a sense of fulfillment in his role as a guardian to the vulnerable, determined to continue fighting for those who couldn't fight for themselves Richard couldn't shake the profound sadness that gripped him as he contemplated the welfare of the young boy, John, and the circumstances that had led to his harrowing plight, the underlying story, a haunting narrative of tragedy and survival, remained a puzzle, a puzzle Richard hoped would eventually lead to a brighter tomorrow for the brave young survivor, the tale of little John, the seven-year-old found in chains, had its origins in the untimely death of his mother, she had succumbed to a chronic heart condition, leaving John in the sole custody of his father, Liam, a man battling his own demons, overwhelmed by sorrow, anger, and an escalating mental illness, Liam's behavior became increasingly volatile, instilling a climate of dread and instability for John, I must keep you safe, John, you can't abandon me like your mother did, Liam would say, his words a disturbing blend of warped affection and paranoia. As Liam's condition deteriorated, John's attempts to escape the terror at home grew. More desperate, but each time he tried to flee, Liam's grip tightened, culminating in the horrifying decision to chain his own son to the bed, a twisted attempt to prevent any further departure, you can't leave, you're all I've got, Liam would whisper as he secured the chain, a chilling testament to his twisted sense of care, for John, trapped in that room, long periods of hunger and cold became the norm, his only world confined to its four walls, his sole companions were the worn out toys his mother had given him, a reminder of happier times now lost to the darkness. After enduring two years in this bleak existence, an opportunity for escape presented itself one day when Liam dropped his phone while serving John's meal, unnoticed, John swiftly grabbed the phone and concealed it within his clothes, later, as Liam realized his phone was missing, he grumbled in frustration, oblivious to the fact that John held the key to his freedom, seizing the moment of solitude when Liam left the house. John dialed the police, his voice quivering as he pleaded for help. Fearing his father might return before assistance arrived, when the police finally freed him, John was washed over with relief and gratitude, his courageous act had paved the way to a new life, one without chains or fear, now, in the safety of the police car, John dared to hope for a brighter future, one where he could finally experience the warmth and security he had been denied for so long. But that evening brought another challenge for Officer Richard a challenge born out of compassion and a desire to offer solace to a child in need with nowhere safe to go, Richard couldn't bear to leave John alone, touched by compassion, he offered his own home for the night, until proper arrangements could be made, how about you stay with us tonight, buddy, he proposed kindly, earning a look of appreciation from John upon their arrival at Richard's home, John was introduced to the family, Richard's ten-year-old son, Alex was thrilled at the prospect of having someone his age around and eagerly embraced the idea of a temporary sibling, could you find some clothes for our guest, Richard's wife asked, eager to make John feel at home, excitedly, Alex rummaged through his wardrobe for the nicest clothes he could offer, wanting to make a good impression, meanwhile, Richard's wife tended to John, providing a warm bath and a meal, that night, John and Alex bonded quickly, sharing stories playing video games, and exchanging toys. A simple yet profound exchange that meant the world to John as Richard watched them interact, his heart swelled with a mix of joy and concern, while he understood that their arrangement was only temporary, a part of him hoped he could provide John with a forever home, in the following days, Richard remained committed to ensuring John's safety and well-being, 
determined to give him the love and stability he deserved, and as the days turned into weeks, Richard's hope for a brighter future for John burned ever brighter, a beacon of light in the darkness of. Their shared past Richard took the initiative to reach out to the Child Welfare Agency, expressing his heartfelt desire to keep John until his father's legal issues were resolved. The social workers, upon visiting, were deeply impressed by how well John had adjusted to his new surroundings, they noted his evident happiness and sense of security. Observing him playing joyfully with Alex while they awaited the court's decision on John's father, it seems he belongs here, remarked one worker. Witnessing the bond between John and Alex, what had begun as a temporary shelter had seamlessly transformed into something more profound as John blended seamlessly into their lives as the court determined that John's father would permanently lose custody due to his actions and mental health issues, Richard and his wife knew what they had to do, gathering everyone together, they made a heartfelt declaration to John, we'd like to adopt you. What do you say, tears of joy and hope filled John's eyes as he responded with eager acceptance, Richard and his wife waited with bated breath, their own eyes brimming with tears at the thought of offering John the future he rightfully deserved, without hesitation, John embraced the idea of joining their family, marking a new beginning in his life, freed from the shadows of his past torment, John now had a family that offered him nothing but love and safety, with his biological father's conviction, John was spared any further contact with the source of his past. Traumas, fully embraced by Richard's family, in the months that followed, John adapted to his new life with remarkable resilience, forming an inseparable bond with Alex, they became more than friends, they were brothers in every sense of the word, sharing adventures, learning, and growing together, John often expressed his gratitude, calling Alex the best big brother ever, with therapy and the unwavering support of his new family. John began to heal from his past traumas, gradually, he became happier more confident, and felt secure in his place within the family, when the adoption became official, it was a day celebrated with laughter, hugs, and tears of joy, John's smile on that day was a testament to his newfound sense of relief, security, and belonging, thank you for choosing me, dad, he told Richard, a moment that underscored the profound impact of love and compassion, John's journey with his new family was a testament to the belief that even from the darkest circumstances, hope and love can emerge, profoundly transforming lives, and for those who found inspiration in John's story, the journey of hope and transformation continues in the stories that follow, next, let's enjoy a story that is similar to this one together, Susan was deeply concerned when she noticed the unusual holes in her baby's nose, despite her initial confusion about the cause and potential danger, she wasted no time seeking medical help, however, the gravity of the situation became apparent when the doctor, after, Examining the baby, urgently involved the police, leaving Susan bewildered and abandoned as she listened to the doctor's explanation, Susan felt overwhelmed by the seriousness of the situation, leading to a dizzying fainting spell, upon regaining consciousness, she was initially unaware of the severity of her baby's condition, going about her morning routine with a sense of normalcy, however. Upon closer inspection, the distressing sight of tiny holes in her baby's nose became all too clear to Susan, despite considering various possibilities, including insect bites, Susan couldn't shake the feeling that something far worse was at play driven by a sense of urgency, Susan contemplated taking matters into her own hands, resorting to using tweezers to investigate the mysterious holes, despite her aversion to doctors and a preference for self-reliance. She grappled with the uncertainty of the situation and the potential risks of her actions, recognizing the gravity of her baby's health situation, Susan knew she couldn't handle it alone, with her baby's well-being at stake, she made the difficult decision to reach out to the doctor for help upon contacting the doctor's office, they arranged a semi-emergency appointment for the same afternoon, although there were others ahead of baby Roy, Susan was assured they would see her by the day's end at the latest, meanwhile, the doctor advised Susan to consider any recent changes or unusual occurrences that might have caused her babies condition, as it would assist in diagnosis as Susan pondered over the past week, she struggled to pinpoint any significant deviations from their routine, aside from a recent hike in the forest, their activities seemed mundane, however, a revelation struck her, the date she had the night before, recalling the unsettling dynamics of the date, Susan couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss with the man she met, despite his intermittent displays of interest, 
there was an underlying discomfort throughout the encounter, Susan questioned whether this stranger could somehow be linked to her baby's ailment, although the connection eluded her, despite her suspicions, Susan couldn't discern any concrete evidence tying the date to her baby's condition, as she drove to the doctor's appointment, her mind raced with unanswered questions, nevertheless, she remained hopeful that the medical examination would shed light on the mystery surrounding her baby's nose upon arriving at the doctor's office, Susan took a moment to gather her thoughts before proceeding inside with baby Roy. Despite her anticipation of a lengthy wait, the situation took an unexpected turn as Roy's condition attracted significant attention in the waiting room, the conspicuous holes in his nose elicited a mix of shock and curiosity from fellow patients and their companions. Susan's initial unawareness quickly dissipated amidst the growing interest from those around her. Children peered with curiosity, restrained by vigilant parents, while other patients paused their own concerns to inquire about Roy's condition. Although Susan found the sudden scrutiny unsettling, she remained grateful for the concern shown towards her baby, however, the doctor's sense of urgency surpassed even the collective curiosity of the waiting room, recognizing the severity of Roy's condition, the doctor prioritized his examination over the other patients, despite Susan's mild discomfort with the special treatment. She appreciated the doctor's dedication to addressing Roy's ailment promptly, inside the doctor's office. The gravity of the situation became palpable as the doctor assessed Roy's nose, his shock at the peculiar condition mirrored Susan's growing concern, as the doctor embarked on a thorough examination, it became evident that Roy's case was unprecedented in the doctor's experience, faced with uncertainty, the doctor made arrangements to redirect his other patients to ensure he could focus on Roy's urgent needs. As tests were conducted and results awaited, the doctor's frustration mounted, despite his efforts, the cause of Roy's condition remained elusive, in a bid for answers, the doctor sought assistance from a medical forum, sharing images of Roy's nose in hopes of garnering insights from fellow professionals. Meanwhile, Susan, feeling overwhelmed, sought solace in a brief moment alone, in her absence, the doctor received a crucial message from the forum, providing both a breakthrough and a grim prognosis. Armed with newfound knowledge, the doctor understood the urgency of the situation and the imperative for swift action to avert potential consequences for Roy and Susan. After receiving the chilling confirmation from the test results and the message from the forum, Susan's doctor sprang into action, the urgency of the situation prompted him to swiftly enact protocols to address the unprecedented threat posed by Roy's condition upon Susan's return from the bathroom. She was met with a distressing sight, the deterioration of Roy's nose had escalated, however, her Immediate concern shifted to the absence of the doctor, before she could formulate a plan, the door slammed shut behind her, trapping her and Roy inside the room, confusion and panic ensued as Susan attempted to seek explanations, only to be met with silence and frantic activity from the medical staff, with her anxiety mounting, Susan resorted to desperate measures, kicking at the door until it yielded, granting her an exit, amidst the chaos, armed officers stormed into the scene, further. Exacerbating Susan's distress, their sudden appearance intensified the gravity of the situation, leaving Susan trembling with fear and confusion as tensions reached a boiling point, Susan's plea for clarity was met with a tentative explanation from one of the officers, the revelation of Roy's deteriorating condition, exacerbated by a flesh-eating virus, sent shivers down Susan's spine, grateful for the medication available at the hospital, Susan clung to hope as Roy was placed in isolation for Treatment, however, the ordeal was far from over as the investigation into the source of the infection led to the discovery of an infected plant along the hiking trail, with Susan and Roy safely relocated to a specialized facility for treatment and isolation, the eradication of the infected plant brought relief and closure to the community, in the aftermath, Susan emerged stronger, ready to embrace life once more, armed with the knowledge of the dangers that lurk in the most unexpected places. Thank you for joining us on this journey, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up so you won't miss any of our next videos, we'll be back with more uplifting and inspiring stories.